Welcome to today's anatomy question. Hi, Mary Richards. Hi, Lizzie Lasseter. So we are back with our essential alignment series, which is, of course, based on mom's book, 30 Essential Yoga Poses. And today, Mary, we are on pose number 11, which is called Standing Forward Bend. What is this called in Sanskrit? Uttanasana. Okay. So what I'd love... First of all, is for everyone watching to go to this website, www.experientialanatomy.yoga, jump on our mailing list, and you'll get notified when our next digital course happens. Very exciting. Mary, in terms of movement literacy, which is your dream for all yoga teachers and all yoga practitioners, what I'd love for you today is something, one thing that we can feel in our bodies that will make this pose uh, perhaps more pleasant, but also in your opinion, um, safer and healthier for us to practice from an anatomical perspective? So I'd like us to change how we enter the pose. Typically, uh, many of us move into Uttanasana or standing forward bend, uh, by lifting the chest and sort of swan diving into it. And I'd like us to stop doing that. <laughs> so tell me what you don't like about that. What happens when we, and I will demo it in a moment. I've got my mat, my second camera. What happens when we dive forward as a back bend into the pose? Several things, but I want to talk about one in particular. And that is it uh, really puts a lot of load and strain on the transitional segment between your thoracic and lumbar regions in the vertebral column. And energetically, it's sort of a disconnect in the pose because standing forward bend is a pose of both hip and lumbar flexion. And forward folds are about pratyahara, the drawing of our senses within. And so when we lift the chest and kind of uh, dive into the pose, it's sending a contrary message. And I want coherence uh, in terms of our kinesiology as well mm -hmm. as our chakras. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Full service, full spectrum. <laughs> okay, so I, why don't I get on the mat and we can look at version A, ver version B. I'll pause this video. So the other one will be a bit bigger. All right. Now the exact opposite of Uttanasana. She is laying here on her side on my desk. Oh, can you show us? Can you show us with the camera? I gotta see oh, her. Of course. She's just like, why aren't we doing side lying Shavasana? <laughs> oh, Penelope just made my day. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I like your foot placement, Lizzie. <laughs> uh, but I'd like you to uh, take the more uh, typically instructed position. So next to the big toes, together outer edges of the feet parallel. And I'd like you to go ahead and uh, tuck your tailbone and lift your chest. Yep. And now... <laughs> and now when you're ready, uh, dive on into the pose. Keep lifting your chest as you fold forward. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So where do you feel the weight in your feet when you do that? Forward in the toes. Yeah, too far forward. We want the weight in the heel cup. Okay. okay, so now I'd like you to separate your feet at least a fist width, maybe two fist widths apart. Outer edges of the feet parallel, so our thigh bones are neutral. And just let your pelvis be, let it find its natural position. And instead of swan diving and pushing the ribs forward and sucking your kidneys in, now I want you to think about the normal curves of your body and your rib points balanced over your hip points. Okay. 
Okay. And uh, when you're ready, you can keep your fingers there if you'd like. When you're ready, exhale at the hip, fold forward. Yeah. Now, how does that feel to you? It's so much quieter, actually. Yes. yes. Yes, it really become, it really brings the pose into our middle. Yeah. And see, by, by starting in neutral, normal curves of the vertebral column displayed, we started an, out in a position of stability. And then once you get to 90 degrees, if you come to, if you come into the pose again, Lizzie, and notice once you're at 90 degrees, you feel how your abdominals are just right there. Yeah. They've caught your lumbar spine. And then if you exhale and continue into the pose, it's effortless. Whereas when we lift the chest and jut the ribs forward, we've really disconnected our abdominal muscles from the pose. <laughs> so, yeah, and and, that, in that way, I feel all the back body working really intensely. Yeah, because you're, the muscles of the low back have to grab to stabilize at T12 L1 when you do that swan dive and we don't want that grab. All right, let me come back to you here. That's so fascinating to me. Um, so let me summarize in my words to help me kind of solidify it. So what you're saying is that this is a forward bend, so it doesn't make anatomical sense to charge into it as a back bend. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so what about the person who's watching? I did Ashtanga, for example, for four years, and in the way I was taught, we, it, every sunset, I mean, lots of flow-based practices use this uh, swan dive into the sun salutation. So I did 10,433 of them uh, in my, <laughs> a decade ago. So what, you know, what about the person who says, but it feels good to me, or it feels like yoga, or it feels flowy and yummy and juicy, um, you know, how dangerous. Familiar. It feels familiar. And yeah. this is the thing. And we, you know, we're butting up against this feeling of familiarity in just about every aspect of our lives. I mean, you may, may be in relationship with a friend that's not the best friend for you to have, you know, but you've been friends since you were six years old. And so you'll always be friends. But I'm saying, meet new people. <laughs> <laughs> meet people. Surround yourself with people who love and adore you. That's, yes, that's right. And uh, so what feels familiar doesn't necessarily mean that it's healthy. Yeah. And I'm sure, and we didn't talk about this, and we do talk about it in the course, but by making those changes to respect our structure and then to be guided uh, really intimately by the functional intention of a pose, it has a cascading effect, not just in Uttanasana T12 L1, but it also, you'll feel it all the way down to your feet through the crown of your head. And so experiment, try different things, because you may find that, moving from neutral into Uttanasana over time actually feels better in your body. Mm -hmm. And this is why I like asana so much because each time you get on the mat, it's a new practice and we have the opportunity to explore different sensations. So, you know, try it out. Yeah. That's a great place to end. And that's really one of the things I love most about your teaching and mom's teaching in this digital training, this family of digital trainings that we're building called Experiential Anatomy. Because what you really empower us as students to do is you give us anatomical information and then you say, try it out in this and this and this pose and see how it feels. So I would love those of you who are watching at home to try Uttanasana the next 10 times you do Uttanasana um, you know, try it back to back, experiment with different positions as you come down, leave a comment in the YouTube, let us know how it's going, how it feels, make sure 
If you like this type of video, please go to www.experientialanatomy.yoga and jump on the newsletter. Mary, where can everyone find you online? At maryrichardsyoga.com and on Facebook at A Little Yoga Goes a Long Way because I believe that. <laughs> and on Instagram, mainly for pictures of Penelope, <laughs> at uh, Yoga with Mary Richards. Perfect. And I'm lizzielassiter.com. Uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, and we just launched an experiential anatomy Instagram account. There's lots of fun stuff going on over there. So we will talk again very soon. Namaste, Mary. Namaste, Lizzie. <laughs> namaste, <laughs> Penelope. <laughs> that was the cat tail namaste. <laughs>